I'm a dermatologist. I do most surgery as well, but uh, I have a very keen interest in non-invasive imaging of the skin. Uh, so for the most part, we're using digital photography in general for all lesions, uh, including 3D total body photography to track moles or nevi as they change or grow over time. We're also using dermoscopy, including handheld dermoscopy, but also digital dermoscopy uh, for short-term clinical monitoring of nevi, as well as now we're using reflectance confocal microscopy, which is a form of non-invasive imaging of the skin. You know, comparatively, a confocal microscope, a reflectance confocal microscope used in vivo, uh, it's cheaper than, a, per se, a laser that, you know, dermatologists are familiar with. So it's something that you can actually use in your practice and you can use it on a daily basis. Uh, it's actually quite easy to physically use um, as far as putting it onto the patient and imaging the lesion. It's pretty quick. There is high resolution. So you're basic, basically getting cellular resolution in a histological type of fashion. So you're seeing the cellular level um, underneath the skin and we can approximately go in about 200 microns in depth and you can make out the different types of cells, inflammatory infiltrates, um, and then depending on how well you can interpret the images, and that does take a learning curve, that takes some time to learn, you can diagnose benign versus malignant lesions. I think it's similar to learning dermoscopy. So if you understand dermoscopy and you understand histology, uh, that does take some time to learn. Confocal microscopy, I think takes about a year learning curve. So you start out, you know, reading the atlases and the books, the textbooks that have been published, but then physically using the machine and imaging lesions that you know are benign uh, versus more malignant lesions. Just imaging uh, constantly is going to help you understand and interpret these images better. Yeah, so there's courses all around the world now, which is great. We have a big community of confocal enthusiasts. Uh, there's co courses in Modena with Giovanni Pelicani, but we also have a course at our hospital at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering we're doing a teaching course, a basic teaching course on reflectance confocal microscopy in vivo, and we've had it every year. Plus now we have the World Congress of Confocal Microscopy. Uh, the first one was in Rome uh, two years ago, and now the next one will be in New York in uh, 2020. Uh, I use it before surgery to actually delineate the margins of the tumor um, to help me better gauge how big the surgery will be. So I use it a lot for melanomas of the head and neck, lentigo maligna, and I actually use a handheld version of the confocal microscope to trace out the borders of the melanoma b before surgery. It gives us a better idea of how large the subclinical extension of the melanoma is and how large we think the defect will be. It's helpful for the patient and for the reconstruction. I also use it uh, for non-invasive techniques, such as a miquimod for the treatment of melanoma in situ. So doing it before uh, a miquimod and then after to see resolution or persistence of the melanoma. Yeah, we, we had a nice publication in JAMA Dermatology on the use of the handheld confocal microscope uh, in determining the extent of lentigo maligna margins before surgery. We recently published that. We also published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, the JAD, on the uh, basically correlation between histology and confocal microscopy for these large uh, facial lentigo malignas. I also have a, a keen interest in extra memory Paget disease. Um, and so we've been really characterizing the features that we're seeing under confocal microscopy because Paget, extra memory Paget disease can be quite challenging to diagnose sometimes. Uh, it can just look like a, you know, a pink patch. And so there are very distinct um, confocal features that we've been seeing. So we published on that as well. Yeah, so we've also been working with uh, optical coherence tomography um, and actually have been utilizing a device that combines reflectance confocal microscopy and optical coherence tomography. Because one of the limitations of confocal microscopy is the depth that you can image you really can only get about 200 microns deep. Um, so that'll get you through the epidermis and then into the papillary dermis. Uh, whereas with OCT, we can image deeper. We don't have the same resolution. We don't see the cellular resolution that you do on confocal, but we can see better depth. And for us, it's helpful when we're triaging basal cells to surgery versus non-surgery. Because if we can know the depth of the basal cell, 
beforehand. We know better if our photodynamic therapy will work or if um, our topical um, amiquimod or topical um, chemotherapies will, will work or if this, if this basal cell should just be removed surgically. Uh, I, think, I think confocal is just becoming more popular. I think it's nice to use it in conjunction with dermoscopy when you're diagnosing lesions. But now we're also using it uh, to plan surgeries or to plan non-surgical treatments. I also use it with laser um, ablation of basal cells. So it's more work that I've been publishing on.